Look up. Look way up. And here's a jewelry jar from Pat Hood with Passions and Pastimes. Uh, welcome back to my channel and in a minute I will be opening up this jar and beginning to share the contents with you. That look up, look way up. That's a line from a famous Canadian television show called The Friendly Giant. And uh, when I was trying to show how big this jar was, um, it certainly reminded me of him. Lots of um, ex interesting things in this jar. There's some sort of turquoise colored stones. I'm sure they're not turquoise. Some shell jewelry. A couple of watches, some wooden jewelry. There's this really interesting, looks like wooden painted piece. Um, some gold tone things. There's some howlite. There uh, are a couple of lamp finials. There's one right there. Looks like uh, a hand holding, or uh, yeah, a hand holding, um, oh, what are those? Uh, a laurel wreath that the Greeks would wear. Um, that's definitely a lamp finial and not a piece of jewelry. This might be a lamp finial too, for all I know, this funny thing. Wooden bracelet, um, something else with an interesting dangle, some glass beads, some faux pearls, uh, something interesting down in the bottom here, some crocheted material that isn't quite as interesting, but a lot of promise in this jar. So let me get the scissors and I'll cut open the top and I'll begin to share it with you. The top of the jar cut open with that uh, uh, shell necklace attached to it. This jar was $24.99 and I got 20% off, so basically $20 Canadian. So for those of you who yeah, probably $15 US, $16 US, probably not as even the $16. Um, I'm gonna, just going to get rid of that and let things fall out. Whoa, something really heavy came out. We'll undo this necklace and we'll take a few more things out. Get rid of the jar. We'll get things all lined up properly here. And we'll see what we have. I've lost my center piece. There we go. That's so much better. Let's clear the decks. Hey, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I've got the first item out of the jar. Now, this is a two strand seashell necklace. It's unusual to see two strands. There's seed beads here and then this type of shell. I don't know the types of shell. This and the sort of the mini scallop shell and the scallop shells have pieces of mother of pearl on either side of the hole. I guess be so that they didn't uh, so that the beads didn't pull through the hole. So they're actually quite nicely put together and it's a relatively long necklace. Let's see if I can find the other end. Make a delightful sound when uh, you're wearing it, when it clicks together. I just have some of the beads here sort of tangled. There we go. So, let's see. Nine, eighteen, twenty-seven. So probably since about thirty inches with the uh, clasp. A nice variety of shells. Um, very clean looking. A little different design than what you usually see. Um, and if you weren't uh, a fan of shell necklaces, these could be very nicely repurposed. Um, to uh, like a, a wind chime or a wind clacker. Very nice sound they're making. Um, that's probably an artisan piece collected um, 
you know, on a vacation where shells are abundant. I like the fact that there's these brownish shells in between the very white shells and then these beautiful pieces of mother of pearl. Very nice. So a little different right off the top of the jar. Now, oh, okay. This is some, I would probably say reconstituted stone or some howlite, a howlite chunk and howlite chips, three strands. Um, they have their a nice stretch there still. Glass beads on either side to uh, give it a little sparkle. So there's some nice uh, stone chips. Uh, very wearable bracelet as it's on its own or could be repurposed uh, as with, because of the real stones. This is a little different. This is paper beads. And they're strung with uh, lovely little yellow um, seed beads in between. So very nicely created. Um, not a lot of stretch in it, but it doesn't sag, so yeah. I'm not a big fan of paper beads, but these ones are well made and they're nicely glazed, so they're nice and shiny and uh, they're well put together. What else have we got in that turquoise sort of Put that to side one, two, three. These are very shiny plastic beads. Um, imitating the howlite. Um, and they're not even glass, they're just plastic. There's no temperature change to them, but um, you know, very wearable. So I'll have to figure out what to do with those. I probably will donate those. Um, there's a jewelry group here in my area that takes jewelry to long-term care homes and they have free sales. So the people in the homes can go and buy a piece or take a piece for free. It's all wrapped up. They, they try it on, they look in the mirror, they, you know, check out a few pieces and then they, um, I'm not sure what the, if there's a limit, but there's scarves, watches, um, you know, bracelets, rings, earrings, necklaces, and now they're getting some requests from men for, um, men's watches, um, suspenders, things like that. So they're always looking for donations. So either these will be donated as a set or, um, given to my kids a lot for uh, kids to use. Here's a, another stretchy bracelet. This one's almost stretched out. These are just plastic, light, very lightweight pearls, but in very good condition. No peeling or, or uh, discoloration. And uh, so those will probably go in the kid lot. You certainly could mix it up by putting this kind of thing together to wear. It would really sparkle it up. There's some other blue bracelets I see in here. I'm not sure if these are meant to be a set, but they're, again, lightweight. Oh, yeah, they're probably a set, because look how the, the beads are similar between them. You've got these straight uh, cylinders, cylinders over here, large ovals, small ovals. They're all plastic. Again, there's pretty good stretch to them. So again, those could be wearable, useful for kids' jewelry, or perhaps if they were tightened up for a donation. Here's a couple of watches. Um, most jewelry jars have watches in them. This one is an Aldo watch. Um, I don't know if this is broken or not. Oh, no. You know, that on the outside... The watch is, um, doesn't look like it's got a lot of, you know, scratches or anything on it. There's a little bit there on the edge. Um, it's fairly heavy. Now that I got it put together, I don't know if I can get it apart. Let's look on the inside. 
even just needs a good cleaning on the back here. And it tells you what kind of battery. So uh, there'd be a watch I could uh, put a new battery in and probably donate. I, I don't know. Would I wear it? I have enough battery and uh, enough watches. It's kind of heavy. I mean, it's white. I'm not sure it would be a guy's watch because it's got these little rhinestones in there. I don't know if this turns. Nope. But, um, yeah, if a woman wants to wear that, there she goes. Here's another watch, a very small, much smaller watch. Um, Xanadu. Yeah, we get a lot of uh, Xanadu watches. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't want to focus any better than that, but it doesn't. Xanadu, again, probably just needs a battery. It's uh, a little cleaning inside. This band is in great shape. So there's a watch that can be donated. This fell out of the top of the jar. I'm not a great fan of these. But this one is in excellent shape. Um, for the right person, great bracelet or set of, <laughs> we call this a set of bracelets. Um, I sort of that gunmetal look. I don't see the, any markings for manufacture, but a nice uh, bracelet set. Lots of bracelets so far. Here's a little teeny tiny thing. Look at this face. What do you think of that? I guess it's a kitty cat. Look at the oh, the eyes move. Oh, that's freaky. Um, it's very lightweight. It's got like a C clasp. It's riveted together at the nose. I'm gonna just check up close to see if it's marked in any way. Oh, that's cool. It it's hard to see because it's way over there. But you might be able to see it. I'm going to see if I can. Whoops. There you go. Can you see the Hong of Hong Kong? So it's Hong Kong. Let's go back to normal here. What a cute little thing. Oh, I got to keep that. My, uh... I wonder what if there was supposed to be something above the nose there, if that's just where the rivet is. Um, my grandchildren, my, my daughter and my grandchildren, have a cat now. So I bet my granddaughter would love to have this. A little cat. That's kind of cute. That's worth, I'm going to put that up there. That's kind of cute. Ah. Now, what else have we got? Another blue bracelet. This one, wood. Definitely wood. There you go. Definitely wood. It's got good stretch. Very wearable. Um, just need to give it a wash. And this, these are plastic, but they're heavier. And a good stretch as well. This is a very wearable piece. So that's uh, something I would donate on. This is intriguing. It had one of those uh, nice clasps. Those I can't remember what they're called. A fish hook clasp, maybe? Goes in and fishes into the sort of the uh, oval or marquee shaped thing. It's obviously missing the other half of its clasp. These are cold beads. These are tiger's eye, and they're not knotted between each other. These other beads that are very cold are knotted in between. So I don't know if that means that they are a semi-precious stone. You know, for me, unfortunately, black glass and black onyx and other black stones, I can't really tell the difference. I mean, I can tell tiger's eye. These are plastic those ones they're not and those are might probably metal more tiger's eye more of these knotted in between ones more tiger's eye so very nice 
beads for repurposing. Love them. Very, very nice. Okay, a cat I love. Some tiger's eye I love. More blue beads. This is um, lobster claw clasp. Some, hmm, to figure out if these are glass. Okay, so these big ones here are heavy. They're glass. These ones I don't think are glass. They're very, very lightweight. I think they're plastic. These are coconut shell or wood in between. This thing is very long. It's very nice and it's very wearable. Um, I love the, the blues. Uh, I think the blue and the the blue and the tan and the fact that there's different shades of blue are very are very nice together. Um, definitely not worth it to take apart for these because these aren't a very high quality bead. Those are glass too. I think this is gonna one of those let's wash it and donate it things because um, it's not too heavy to wear. Um, certainly not. Not my taste. Let's see. I have to. Maybe the uh, the gratis shop would enjoy that. Another one of these. So, oh, they're different. Okay, so this is dark, like uh, dyed halite with the little black veining in it. This is um, feels like stone. And it's definitely got a blue dye to it. Stone chips of some sort. Well, I say definitely got a blue dye to it. I could be wrong. Um, I just can't see them using Laramar, which is kind of in this shade. In an inexpensive little stretchy bracelet. So I'll try to see if I can try to find out more about what this is. It's some kind of stone. It's cold. It's dyed or comes in that color. And this is a huge chip here. So interesting. Well, one more piece and then it'll be time to dig into the jar again. Now this is odd. This is This almost looks like somebody put a couple pieces together. Doesn't this look odd? I mean, obviously it's missing a pearl. Um, it's totally the wrong color for the band it's on. It's kind of the right shape, but they're definitely glued together. I don't know if you can see that. If I zoom in, can you see they're, they're, how it's glued on there? And they're very, very different colors. The reason I'm wondering is at this end, there's the lion. Bear with me while I try to show you what that this says Anne Klein. There, you can kind of see it. If you at least trust me, it says Anne Klein. I don't know if we can put the light right on it. There's a little better. Anne Klein. So, I'm not familiar with Anne Klein things done in two-tone like this. Certainly looks like this part is, I don't know, like it should have been gold and lost all its color. Okay, so here's this two-tone incline piece that I don't think this belongs on here. But this is also soldered, kind of, well, kind of soldered there. It's strange. I'll have to see if I can find out more about it. Certainly in this condition it's not much use for anything. I would at least take this off 
if I could. Oh well, put that off to the side. Try to get everything back in shape here. I'm still happy with my little kitty and my beads. And we're getting to 20 minutes, so let's take a few more little pieces out and uh, see what we can find. So here is a wooden bracelet. If it was meant to be stretchy, it's kind of uh, outstretched. I don't know what you would, what else you could do with these little wooden discs. I'll have to think about that. You could decorate them, put something on them, and how many are there? Let's see. Can we make a word? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So joyous or joyful. You could make something um, Christmassy or seasonal with little letters on them, but I'm not sure if I want to go to all that work. Here is another wooden necklace. This one's quite interesting. It's got a very heavy chain. This is substantial brass chain. Um, quite dark. And then these very nice Though a little rough, um, wooden beads. This one's some of these are a little rough in the center, but uh, a little cleanup. And this would be a, I think a very wearable necklace. Certainly, this part's quite light. This part is so heavy, I it might weigh on your neck. I might want to put a lighter chain on there and reuse that brass chain for for something else. Um, oh, this is interesting. It might be a total tangle, too. So, I don't know. There's the top of the necklace. This is the... <laughs> I'm going to say this is the bottom. This is the pendant. And did it... Is it... Detangling? There's a beautiful little butterfly. I keep losing my focus today. Um... Plastic, plastic, a little butterfly, uh, I mean a little flower, a little leaf, some other bits of dangle, some cup chain, some pearl chain. Well, there's a very wearable modern necklace that definitely just needs a cleaning and can be donated or given to someone who would uh, like a lightweight but little, very pretty um, youthful looking necklace. That's kind of nice. And here's a chain. You can't really tell, but it's gold tone. And it's got pearl stations. And there's no clasp. There might have been a tag or something there. So we've got one, two, three, six. So six stations. So it would be, it's not, uh, it'd be too short to wear doubled up, I think. Um, but uh, cleaned up a nice little single chain. With a, you know, the pearls make a nice little contrast, make it a little dressier. And I think I'm going to end here with this because we're about a third of the way through the jar. This is a, a probably an artisan made piece, you know, for the uh, tourist trade. It's got, these are probably bone or wood pieces with markings in them. Um, these are heavy um, brass or you're getting a little verdigris happening there. It's not bad looking. This feels like glass in the center. There's uh, another one. Oh, that one's pretty discolored from verdigris. And, oh, I guess it's... Oh, is it supposed to hang out like that? 
Oh, I guess so. It's supposed to hang so that these ones on the outside are uh, are a little bit wider. It's quite nice. Um, there's some really nice glass beads here, sort of mottled. I think they're glass. They're pretty. Um, and then the wood, you know, the wooden and bone beads. If it doesn't clean up, I would take it apart, even for the green. These green glass beads are quite lovely. Um, and uh, see if I could do something with it. Be nice though if you could clean it up for someone to wear. It would have to be the, the right person to pull that off though, I'll tell you that. Well, halfway through the jar, a lot more to see. Um, we'll be back with part two. It's Pat Hood from Passion's Pastime. Thanks for stopping by and hope you're having a great day.